children was very good. Yeah, not from a personal point of view. Uh, did my money. I think Sir Deschamps was my first winner on the Friday. Well done. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. But I had to wait till the Friday to get my first winner, so <laughs> it didn't feel like well done. And have you got anti-post on Sir Deschamps for the next year? Uh, yeah, we're. Uh, I think no, we're, like you personally. No, I've not backed it. Um, sixes. Our guys have told me I should be backing it. We're going to be running for cover, shall we say, when it comes to Sir Deschamps. He jumped better than any horse at the festival That's absolutely awesome, awesome. Um, yeah he, and, and it looks a very open gold cup situation now where you suddenly get horses like the giant bolster you know running second and yeah great performance by synchronized but what is a nine-year-old you don't usually get nine-year-olds improving to win a gold cup do you so very open as said so Deschamps the one definitely the sky bet boys are keeping on side for over over next winter Um, the Thursday was tough, very tough. Uh, four favourites and um, a save second favourite, which was Sedeshamp actually in the first race there. Um, yeah, there was, it was one of those days where you just couldn't get out of the way of them. Sunny Hill Boy was a price wise, and and there's never individual results that actually do you any harm. You know, you do a few quid. It's the roll ups. The roll ups are always the things at Cheltenham that you just petrified about seeing a massive big roll-up going into a couple of the later races because you can't do anything about it by then um, and you get so many small Yankees and this that and the other um, so thankfully we we didn't do any damage in that department but uh, it was really good really buoyant business people love Cheltenham every year they love a punt on Cheltenham and uh, it gets better and better Price-wise, Tom Segal's in great form. There's very few people move the market, but Tom certainly does, because um, you just know you get that's what you're going to lay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I can't be having synchronised for the national though. Any horse that runs in the Gold Cup, I usually put a line through for the national. I just think it takes too much out of them. So, uh, but so we'll have to wait and see. I think the favourite looks fantastic. You know. Um, Graham Wiley, I'm a big fan of Graham Wiley's. I think he's done a lot for racing in the north of England. You know, I've presented prizes to him umpteen times, um, and he's a really nice guy. You know, he, he's just no, no airs and graces, really decent guy, and I'd be, I'd be delighted if he sort of got a winner. He's obviously had Cheltenham winners before. To win a Grand National is a sort of uh, a horse race, particularly a jump horse race, an owner's dream. So it'd be great for him if he won that. Um, the coming flat year, um, well, we've got a syndicate horse at work, which is our big thing. Um, it's, it's called Cielo Rojo, um, which is the, the reason for it, and it, we'd be here about half an hour if I tried to explain it all, um, is Red Sky in Spanish. Uh, so Red Sky, we, it's a Red Club's colt, which Richard Fahey bought for us. I've been involved in horses for years, you know, in different levels, and I've got a real bugbear with communication. You know, I work in the communications business, and you just, you don't get that ownership feel from so many trainers. And Rich is the first one I've really come across who yeah. is so amiable, you know, you can go up the yard, you know, and we, we have... 30, 40 people who are part of the syndicate, so we're sending them videos every week, emails, interviews with Richard. The horse has never run yet, yeah. you know, but you know, we feel like it doesn't matter if they're paying 30, 40, 50 quid a month or whatever it might be, they need to feel like they own it. Yeah. And with emails now, there's no excuse. You know, we can take, get my iPhone up there, take a picture of it, be washed down, a little bit of work, and you send them comments through, and all these people who are living in London who work at Sky, who are part of our syndicate, they now feel as much they own the horse. And I've been involved in syndicates, and you just know information. You know, when's it going to run? Don't know. Yeah, and, and that was one of my frustrations, so I'm delighted that we've got our own syndicate going, as I say, a work one, and that's why we've got Richard, because I think, just think he's fantastic. He's the, he's the best as a trainer. And a communicator. A communicator is absolutely brilliant, and that's a massive part of it. The first lesson I learned in bookmaking was listen to people who know more than you do. Yeah. 
Um, and I've always tried to do that. There's some people who, if they tell me about it, I just blindly back it. I don't ask a question because they're so good. Um, and every, we all have, you have to use your own filter because you get so much information, tips, this, that and the other. This has been back, that's been back. It was back last time out. Study too exactly you can get so into it that you end up twisting yourself in half um, but fundamentally you, you've got to if you think you're good then then back your judgment that's fine um, but also if there's people better than you and in racing there's a heck of a lot better than I am that's for sure I tend to listen to them and, and try and follow them accordingly Bookmakers now are very much almost like IT companies. You've got to get your technology right. It's not so much about you know being a standout price and saying we're going to be this price, that price, taking opinions. What you've got to do, people want ease of access. They want to be able to navigate quickly. They want to be able to get on quickly. Um, so I think if you can offer that to your customers and that quality of service is huge, uh, they'll keep coming back. Um, and we're fortunate at the moment that people are coming back and, and using us. Um, football is massive for us, um, but the racing's growing nicely every year as well. So we've got a lot of customers who are five racker men, you know, yeah. they, they're five teams on a Saturday or ten racker, and in a recession, they won't really change because that's their entertainment for the week. Um, if people are, are betting serious money, then those people often disappear because you know there just isn't the money around but it's it, the bookmaking industry is still doing all right